All right, another video here talking about the financial world and all the corruption in it. Things that my wife found, quotes and things that she shows me. And this is another book that she's been reading, Our Crowd, uh, The Great Jewish Families of New York. Again, it's not an anti-Semitic book. It's talking about them. It's an actual history book about these people, the financial stuff that they get into. And the reason I'm bringing this out is because we're heading into the time of Jacob's trouble. The nation of Israel is going to be judged. I am not anti-Semitic. I don't hate the Jewish people, but I'm supposed to raise up my voice like a trumpet and show my people their sin, the Bible talks about. Um, in the book of Isaiah, I think it is. And I'm supposed to show the Jews their sin to make them understand why the time of Jacob's trouble is coming. That's what the, the point of this video. They have been involved in some very wicked things, and I'm rebuking them for that. So let me show you a quote from this book talking about a lot of the um, financial scheming and things that they get into. Okay, here we have page 87, and I will start uh, here. He hardly mentions union bonds at all. He seems much more interested in an idea that has been growing in his mind, to set up an international Seligman banking house, a house designed along the lines of the House of Rothschild, a house whose style was represented in America only by August Belmont. But first Joseph, Joseph Seligman, in other words, would have to get, wait out the war. In January 1864, he wrote, should we conclude um, to go into banking, my presence in Europe during this summer and winter may be necessary to put things into train for the banking business. The fact that I have done little or nothing up to this time is no proof of my inability to effect something but arose out of our cautiousness not to enter into anything during wartime. Up to this time, of course, includes the time Joseph supposedly had sold union bonds in the hundreds of millions worth, yet Joseph seems apologetic, almost defensive, about having done little or nothing. For a great propagandist of the union cause, Joseph's letters during the early year, war years are oddly gloomy and pessimistic about the union, union's chance, chances of winning. In 1863, he confided to his friend Wolf Goodhart that he didn't uh, much care which side won the war. He simply wanted it to be over so he could set up his banking house. As a booster of American credit abroad, he took his, this stand in a letter to his brother William. As I have so often said, the wealth of the country is being decimated and people are rich in imagination only. California is the only exception to, up to this time. Query how long will it last even there? To bolster his sagging morale, William Seligman wrote hurriedly back, "The capital, or the Cal California capital, has swelled to nine hundred thousand dollars." Okay, now there's a whole lot more I could read about that, but what you just saw there is a banker, Joseph Seligman, and he is saying, "I don't care who wins the war. I've been selling Union bonds, you know, getting financing for the Union Army, but I really don't care who wins it." So this is what I've been saying. Bankers, they don't care. There is no patriotism with a banker. They look and they say, you know, patriotism is only just another way to make money. How much can I make off of little, you know, American flags that come from communist China or something? That's their patriotism, idea of patriotism. They don't care. All they want is to make money. He's saying, I wish this war could be over so that I can set up my banking house, you know, the this banking system and whatever else. I'm making all this money, but then I can take it and I can invest it into something else. You know, again, think of think of banking. Instead of the the guys in the suits and ties and, you know, the hidden hand thing, you know. Uh, no, think of bankers as a bunch of people out at Las Vegas gathered around the blackjack table or the, you know, I don't know that much about gambling and casino places because I've never been in one, have no intention of ever going into one. But, you know, the, the roulette table or poker or some of the other stupid things people blow their money on. And they're all just standing around, you know, whatever. All oh, we're getting big money. Come on, let's get some big money in here. Yeah, let's roll the dice. Let's let's play the cards. Let's do this other stuff. Ah, I'm getting bored of that. Let's go to the next gambling table. That's what banking is. That's what the whole international finance world is. Uh, that's why you shouldn't put your trust in that stuff. Okay? Uh, that will be it. See you in the next video.